When it comes to design a switch mode power supply, calculate the resonance frequency of an LC tank circuit or evaluating a filter circuit, a decent function generator becomes extremely handy. Obviously, if you are looking for crazy advanced features, then it becomes an extremely expensive piece of equipment. Cheaper alternatives do exist. At around $7, you can buy this kit based on XR2206 function generator IC. By looking at the datasheet, it sounds quite promising. Believe it or not, before trying this out, I have used this simple circuit based on 555IC as a signal generator. Yes, it has several disadvantages. So without further ado, let's take a look at this kit, how it could perform, what are its advantages and disadvantages and finally is it worth paying $7? Let's find it out. So this is the packaging I have received. Tearing this apart, there are all the components to complete this kit. Start with 3 potentiometers, a bag with some complementary components, 3 knobs, the main IC with the socket, 1 screw terminal, 2 jumpers and 2 electrolytic capacitors. In this plastic bag, there are some resistors, non-polar capacitors, an electrolytic capacitor and finally a DC jack. In this package, there is a detailed instruction manual with a packaging list and the most important part I get, the PCB. After checking all the components from the list, I have started assembling which isn't a hassle if you are familiar with soldering. All the components in the kit has are through-hole components. Even the IC itself is in dual inline package, which might make the soldering process bit easier. When you are soldering, it's important to place the components in the right place. Let's begin with the resistors. Here is a tip for you. Always start from low height components like resistors that make the soldering a bit easier. To detect the resistor value, you could use the color coding or just use the multimeter if you want to double check it. In the manual, there is a list of all the components and the detailed instruction where they should be placed. On top of the PCB, you can see the marks and numbering of the respective components. This layer is called silk screen. Next, we should place the ceramic capacitors. There are some numbers written on it which represents their values. Don't worry about that much for now because in the instruction they also mentioned the capacitor code. Easy, right? Moving on, it's time for an electrolytic one. When it comes to electrolytic capacitors, then polarity is very important. This is the marking for electrolytic capacitors. This side refers ground. All of these capacitors have a ground mark, you just need to follow it. In the user manual, they have clearly mentioned which capacitor layout is for which. After soldering, it's time for the IC socket. On the silk screen, this mark represents the sockets as well as the IC's orientation. Before soldering, it's better to bend the two diagonal pins of the socket. It could resist the socket to fall off. After snipped out the remaining pins, all you have to do is to solder all these pins at once. Afterward, I slid down the male headers and the DC jack through their respective holes. The last component I need to put on is these potentiometers. Their values are written on their back. You just need to follow the instructions to identify their places. Following the soldering process, here is the another tip for you. It's better to bend these pins a little bit for your convenience. As now we are almost at the end of the assembly. Now the last piece of this puzzle is left, the screw terminal. After putting it back and inserting the IC into its socket, I have finally done the assembling. With this kit, they have also supplied a sweet little enclosure. You should use it if you are expecting a long life of the kit. Anyway, next I have used the knobs on top of the potentiometers, used the jumpers according to my needs, supplied 12 volt from my bench power supply and we are finally ready to measure some waveforms. So I have hooked up two wires, one is on the ground and other to this. 
This terminal can only provide square waves from 611 mHz to 1.22 MHz, although the signal gets distorted above 500 kHz. At this moment, the first problem I have realized is that we can't adjust the amplitude of the square wave, which we could in the other two forms of the signal. Now I have hooked up my oscilloscope at this point. This can output sine wave and triangle wave. Also I have noticed there is around 6 volt of DC offset is present on the output of the signal generator, which can be filtered out with this simple setup. But sometimes instead of wiping it out completely, it could be better if we can adjust the offset according to our needs, which we might do with this configuration. That's the topic of another video. There is a hassle though. When you need to generate any kind of signal, you always have to attach a scope to visualize the frequency, unlike the expensive ones that always have a display on them. But anyway, now we can switch between sine and triangle wave using this jumper. This jumper sets the range which I have also used to set the square wave frequency to different level. These knobs set the different frequency between that range. This for the amplitude adjustment. This amplitude adjustment knob can't work on the square waves. Sine and triangle waves are formed perfectly in between the full range of 900 mHz to 1.22 MHz. DC offset is always present in the signal. In the sine and square waveforms, we could control the amplitude and the peak to peak voltage rises to around 8 volt. Though at this level, the top and bottom of the waveforms are trimmed down. So it's definitely a problem, but if you don't care about the distortion much, is that voltage level really useful? At this voltage, can this function generator deliver enough current? Well, not exactly. In the datasheet of XR2206, we could see its internal resistance, which I have also calculated to verify. Not exactly 600 ohms, it's 618 ohms. A bit of math shows at this impedance, we can draw up to 10 milliamps on the output. That's also confirmed by my multimeter. There is another problem I have noticed while I am playing around with the kit. We can't actually control the duty cycle of the signal, which might be quite useful feature to have for some specific conditions. But here we don't have that. It always spits out the signal at 50% duty cycle. That's it. Overall, I would say it's a pretty decent kit for a beginner. Maybe there are so many things we have missed with this, but you are getting what you have paid for. With $7 price bracket, it's pretty good kit and of course portable. This kit is also recommended if you are even a pro, because it's small and you can carry it everywhere. If you want to modify the design, there are a lot of opportunities for that. So what do you think about this kit? Let me know in the comment section below. Maybe in the next video, we could modify the kit and take it to the next level. Until then, I hope you guys have learned a thing or two. If so, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe and activate the notification bell for future updates. Thank you so much.